Jonas Vindegel won stage 16 of the 2023 Tour de France by 1 minute and 38 seconds. This gap back to Tadej Pogacar, who came in second, might have been smaller and could have turned the race around for Pogacar if he made a subtle change to his clothing. You see, Vindigo and Jumbo Visma had a secret weapon or two that could have given him a drag reduction of more than 9%. That meant savings of one and a half seconds a kilometer. The secret weapon is something called a chest fairing. And there might have also been a back fairing, but today was missing both of these. We dig into the aero impact of these aero bumps and ask some serious questions about their legality. That's on today's show. And I have epic social media rounds with everything from white shorts to toilet testing, plus pains of integrated components. Hello, I am Damien Roos and welcome to Quick Spin. If you're new here, our Quick Spin compiles all of the cycling related things from the internet in an easy to digest format with all the best news and views. The whole aero bumps thing started for me after seeing a tweet from Bert Blocken, professor of engineering and aerodynamics, raising something called a chest fairing. He links to a triathlete magazine article because these chest fairings are being used by the top triathletes for big advantages, especially over Ironman distances. I have a great video on some testing in the show notes if you want to see that. But the article also mentions Professor Bert Blocken and his colleague, Dr. Fabio Malizia of KU Leuven, and their study of the chest fairing, where they found a chest fairing leads the air around and below the pelvis to flow between two legs, while the cyclist without chest fairing, the air actually bumps into the pelvis, which generates a lot of overpressure, pushing the cyclist back. Blocken found that the type of chest fairing he tested, which is equivalent to sticking a drinking bottle down a tight fitting stretchable shirt, can give a drag reduction of more than 9%. And this, which looks like extra padding, is legal as long as it also has a non-aerodynamic purpose. This is radio communications. If it is something else, then, then it's a hard no. Is this pushing the boundaries, though? There is clearly something holding the radio. Here's some more pictures. Interesting, hey? I will note here that it's not like it hasn't been used before. Take the GB monoboob from the Mixed Relay a couple of years ago. It is a great area, and some clarification around this would be good to know going forward, as right now it looks like this might have made some difference to the outcome of the biggest race in the world. And it actually doesn't stop there. There are more questions raised by Jumbo Visma's aero optimization. This reply to the original tweet caught my eye. It seems something is going on the backs of Jumbo Visma riders. And while Bert replied by saying this, we tested items on the back intensively, never found a significant benefit, but it is always possible we missed something here. But I would be surprised if this helps. These pictures from Luis Lopez of Jonas Vindigo show there might be something going on here. Look, it could just be their back shapes or a position change, but it doesn't seem to move as you can see here in this clip. If it is something shoved down the back of his skin suit, then it could be illegal because the rule here is very clear. The UCI rule is rule 1.3.0424, which stipulates where bottles may be placed on a bike and how Camelback and other hydration systems must be worn during competition. These are not hydration systems though. And they give an example of what is not legal with this accompanying picture of a non-compliant system. This picture here is Frank Schleck who tried it both ways. And back in the 2011 Criterium International in which he used a Camelback hydration pack down the front of his jersey in a time trial to create an aerodynamic fairing, Schleck later faced investigation from the UCI and the tactic was subsequently banned. But if this is something here, it certainly raises more questions, doesn't it? 
By the way, if you are looking for aero testing and are in the UK, Cycling Weekly gives you some numbers on what your testing options are, like drag to zero wind tunnel testing at Silverstone costs 1200 pounds for two to three hours. That is a serious investment. Social media rounds. Mark Cavendish, the record holder for stage wins in the history of the Tour of Turkey, returns to Turkey as an honored guest. Cav rose from the ashes in Turkey two years ago with four stage wins and completed that journey with four wins in the 2021 Tour de France. G on IG. Man, check the setup. Faded jersey and bodge light mount. He is speaking to all the real riders with this setup. And we have MVP rocking the white shorts already as only a true boss would do. And speaking of world champs or the world championships, we talked about Marlene Rousseau and her withdrawal in the time trial. And she posted a really nice update on Instagram saying this, I was preparing myself to face a storm. You sent me such encouraging and wonderful messages instead. This changes a lot for me. Thank you. Now off for a bike packing trip. See you soon. I told you things were changing. Good job, people. James Jimmy Whelan took his first victory, his first pro victory on a mountain stage of the Volta a Portugal, racing for the Portuguese Glass Drive Q8 Anicolor team. If you know anything about this young buck, it would be his rapid rise from runner to world tour, racing for EF education, but getting dropped by the team and then spending the next year training solo on the hope of signing with a pro team. He was picked up this year by the Portuguese team and has not only repaid the team with this win, but in an Instagram post, he went on to say, it is difficult to describe the emotions of yesterday. A massive thank you to everyone who supports me back home and to the team, lots of love. Here we have, Luis Leon Sanchez showing off those legs again. Hot damn. Magnus Court continuing his rooms and ratings series on Instagram. This time at the Tour of Denmark, where we have some shower drinking for max recovery and toilet testing with helmet, of course. Ineos rider Carlos Rodriguez's crash from the Tour de France has been posted on Twitter, look away now if you don't like watching crashes or someone getting run over. Ah, oh, man. Eric Mas looking much better than the last time we saw him. But I don't know, is there just something different about him? And I don't know if you're a fan of F1, I am, but the gravel racing fin Valtteri Bottas was in Steamboat Springs over the past weekend competing in the SBT gravel, and as this tweet states, he brought home some honors. Dressed as Duffman from The Simpsons, he won the costume competition, winning his weight in beer, which he went on to donate to all of the spectators and competitors. What a champ. This debate popped up on Twitter from user Katie. In what order would you place the best climby sprinters, sprinty climbers? Mountaintop sprinting ability, this is my opinion and will not change your life if you disagree with it. And it goes, Pagacha, Roglic, Ayuso, Evenepoel, Vindegold, Gegenhardt, Hindley, Almeida, Gordou, Thomas, and down the bottom, Lander. Yates, Mass, Carapaz, Vlasov, Bade, and everyone else, all similar-ish. And it definitely stirred up some heat with comments like this, and this. And speaking of Lander, have you seen the Sudal Quickstep announcement video? Well, here it is. You gotta be kidding me. Mika Landa joins the team next year. Cheers. Cheers. And then, of course, there's throwing shade at this guy. Who's on your list? Or to make it easier, who wins out of Pog versus Rog? An article on bicycling.com gets to the heart of why component integration isn't user-friendly and brands must offer a higher level of service so riders can get the fit they need without the fuss outrageous expenses, 
or prolonged downtime. The article discusses the challenges and issues related to integrated component systems on bikes, specifically focusing on Canyon's Endurance Road Bike, which was released last week. Integrated systems offer clean aesthetics and aerodynamics, but they also introduce complexity and, more importantly, potential fit problems for riders. The article highlights the importance of proper bike fit for rider comfort and performance, emphasizing that stem length and bar width greatly impact these aspects. The author criticizes brands that offer integrated systems without providing options for adjusting fit or fine tuning components. There are a lot of examples of brands that do a poor job. I'll leave it up to you to check out the details in the article. But let's say you would expect more at these higher price points. Some of these difficult bikes cost. It's actually quite eye-opening. Examples of brands that do offer customization options are mentioned, such as RIT, Factor, Ferrazzi, and Trek. And the article calls for brands to provide better services and resources for fitting integrated bikes, especially considering the high cost of these products. The author concludes by expressing frustration with the increasing complexity of off-the-rack bikes and the lack of options for customization and fit adjustments. Over to you. Do you have an integrated setup? Have you had trouble getting the right fit? Did you have to pay for new parts when buying your bike and wanted to change something? And also tell me if it's all worth it because of the look. And that's it, our quick spin around the world of cycling. Ride well and catch you next time.